In this video, I'm going to show you how I do my quick, simple, everyday makeup on my mature over 50 skin. Welcome to Beauty by Des and an especial welcome if you're new here. Thank you so much for joining me. My name's Des, I'm over 50 and I love to talk about makeup, skincare, clothes and other bits and bobs that make me happy. I also have a website called Beauty by Des and I'm on Insta and Facebook too. So this is the makeup that I do virtually every day, unless I'm either filming or I'm going out in the evening. What I'm aiming for with this look is to look pulled together, to look office ready or ready for calls on Zoom, that looks effortless and that is effortless. The main feature of this makeup will be the eyes so that I look awake and alive and not look like I've tried too hard. And I'm only using eight products. So let's make a start. I've prepped my skin, I've got my SPF slash moisturiser on, today I've got the Eucerin on, and if you're interested, I have done a video on SPFs recently that sit really well under makeup and that are unfragranced. I'll link that up here for you and down below in the description box. I think the Eucerin is a really great SPF. It's quite thick, but not too thick, and it certainly doesn't pill. So let's start with foundation, and I'm going to use the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin, this one here, and I am in the shade six. I really do love this. It's a skin-loving foundation. Oops, looks like that. I probably need a tad more. And I've done a video well, in fact, by the time this one goes out, I think it will have come out on... Well, I did a dedicated video, actually, about this foundation, but I also did one on serum foundations or skin-loving ingredient foundations. And, um, and I'll link that down below for you as well in case you want to watch that. Now, what I'm going to do... Let me just put my hair out. I'm going to apply it with my fingers and then I will... Um, use my sponge. I really like this foundation. Now this is a medium coverage, although it is a serum foundation because it has got those skin loving ingredients. It's one of the ones that is a bit heavier coverage than some of the others like say the It Cosmetics or the NARS. But I thought it was a good one to use and I am using it quite a bit. I thought it was a good one to use for an office situation because you are getting decent coverage. Right, let me just get my, look what happened. I put this in the wash. I, I think it was one of the Beauty Pie white sponges and I put it in the wash because I usually just throw my sponges in the wash when I'm washing sheets or whatever. And I must have had something blue in there because it's come out blue, but I rather like it. It's kind of like a teal. Right, so I'm going to just spray that with some water and dot around. Just get my mirror and double check how it's looking. It's a great colour, this one. I really like it. I think it suits my skin. Um, I've always found colour matching with Charlotte Tilbury foundations very good. I think I'm always a six, actually. Although, actually, no, I think in the Forgotten, the original foundation she used to do, which I suppose is still around, I think I was sometimes a five and sometimes a six, depending on my um, colour at the time, whether I'd got a bit of a tan or not. Yeah, I think that's looking fine, actually. Do you know, the only bit that I find tricky is around my nose. I mean, I haven't got any dry patches there now because I seem to have managed to eliminate every possible fragrance product that was staying on my skin. But um, if I do find that I've got... If I do find that I've been using something that's fragranced, then I have to be a bit careful around here. Actually, also around here, this is where I get really bad uh, seborrheic dermatitis if I'm not careful. So for concealer I'm going to use the Lancome Teint Idole Ultra Wear which has been one of my, I don't know if I'd call it a holy grail, I'm not sure I'm that sort of fussy about concealers really. In fact I am going to do another wear test, I must do one. Last time I think I did Teint Idole versus Tarte but I probably need to do an e.l.f. because I really like the e.l.f. camo concealer so I should probably do one of those. Um, in fact, let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do a concealer wear test with high-end drugstore. Right, let's pop some under here. We don't need a huge amount. Um, and what I'm going to do is... Oh, do you know, I keep planning to get Angie Hot and Flashy's concealer brush because now you are able to get them. Instead of having to buy a set, you can get them separately and everybody goes on and on and on. 
I'm sure quite rightly about how amazing the um, Angie Hot and Flashy concealer brush is in particular. That seems to be the holy grail brush of her collection. And actually what I did was, when you could only buy them as a collection, I decided to buy a load of um, brushes from Beauty Pies. I joined and I thought well, I might as well see if I can get some brushes from them because they're very reasonably priced once you've joined. And um, one of the brushes, yeah, that was the reason really, one of the brushes from uh, Beauty Pie looked a lot like the Angie Hot and Flashy concealer brush. And also Sally Hughes had raved about the uh, concealer brush from Beauty Pie. So I thought, oh, I'll get that. And actually it is good, although well, I forget to use it. It's funny, I'm much more of a finger girl, as it were, than using brushes. I do use brushes, but I'm not as in love with using brushes as a lot of people are, which is why I haven't usually referenced them all that much in my videos. But again, let me know in the comments below if you would like me to talk about brushes and mention the brushes that I use. Anyway, I think that's quite enough patting. Right, let us now get a brush as we've been talking about brushes and, oh no, wait a minute, forgot, forgot. Must just double check that I have smoothed it down with a sponge and then I'm going to get a brush. There we are. See, I ramble on, I get distracted and forget what on earth I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> Does that happen to you? Right, now I'm going to get this lovely brush, which I really like for using powder around my eyes. It's because it's got a nice thickness to it, but it's very well tapered. And I'm going to get my wonderful Charlotte Air blush, air blush. Do you know why do I really struggle to pronounce this? My mom would be turning in her grave as an actress because I can say Peter Piper picked a peck of pickle pepper. By the way, <laughs> um, this is Airbrush Flawless Finish Setting Powder in number two, and oh, if I can just open it, and this is what it looks like. As you can see, incredibly well used. I was just watching Pampered Wolf this morning while I was getting ready. I love to watch. YouTube videos while I'm getting ready in the morning. So I was trying to do my hair, which has been a bit of a disaster area today. Just will not hold a curl at all. Anyway, I was watching Pampered Wolf and this is one of her holy grails. She loves this powder. She did a really good video about um, what uh, products she liked of Charlotte Tilbury's or loved, I should say, and what she didn't like, um, which is quite interesting. And I think I probably agree with her, although I don't have that many Charlotte Tilbury products. Anyway, how did I get on to, oh yes, I got on to Pampered Wolf because of the Charlotte Flawless Airbrush Flawless Finish. I will say it properly eventually, Airbrush Flawless Finish. So this is obviously going to take a lot longer than it takes me in the morning, but that's because I'm rambling on, because that's what I like doing. You know that by now if you've been watching me for a while. Right, the next thing we're going to do is brows. Now, I am in love with this Bobbi Brown waxy pencil. It is so good. It is definitely, definitely the best pencil of a high-end brand. It definitely is and it's a retractable one. Looks like that. Beautifully waxy which means that it goes on really easily without overdoing it. Because actually what I used to do until well, probably not that long ago really, a few years ago, I used to use a Bobbi Brown eyeshadow on my brows because it was the only thing that I felt I could do. I cannot do little fine hairs with with a pencil. I just can't do it. It's not me. I can't draw. So that kind of gives the game away, really. I just can't do it. But one thing I've noticed, I am using at the moment an eyebrow serum by UK Lash, and I think it's making a difference. I've been trying to find a photo, an image somewhere of me where the gap in my brow showed, but I think that gap is closing, you know, because I can't see it now. It's really interesting. I'm going to see if I can still find a picture because I'm thinking of doing a video about eyelash and eyebrow growth serums because I have tried a few. Now, actually, this is looking a little bit Groucho Marx, which we don't want. So let's just shear that out. I probably, because I've been talking, I haven't been as light touch as I would normally be, but we don't want to look too heavy. See, that's better, isn't it? That's already sheared out things. Yeah, that's much better. Okay, that's the brows. Now we're going to just use an eye pencil. I'm not going to use any eyeshadow at all. Well, I will be using something on my eyes in a moment, but not quite yet. First things first, we're going to use another holy grail of mine at the moment. In fact, <laughs> I feel a holy grail video coming on. And this is by Beauty Pie. 
This is quite funny because in the Beauty Pie blurb, the marketing blurb, it says that if the women of NASA had uh, created an eye pencil, it would have been this one. And I have to say it is absolutely great. This is the pencil and it's not retractable or anything like that. It's an actual pencil. So let me show you how I apply it. So I do pull my lid out like this and I, you see how, look at that. I've hardly touched it and already there's a lot of colour on there. That's going on very nicely. Try and get as close to the lash as possible. And then what I do, I can't wing out because those days are long gone. I'm just too wrinkly down here. Look, I mean, look how wrinkly that is. Nice, isn't it? Very elephant tidy, I always think. But what I'm doing here is I'm pulling it, I'm kind of pulling it up a bit and I'm going to make the outer edge a bit thicker. Like that. I'm going to tidy that up with the cotton bud in a moment, but you can see how it's looking there. And let me do the same on the other side. So thicker at the side and thinner, tapering in as it were, as we go towards the other and the inner corner. <laughs> I've got one eye for reading and one for distance, and this is forgotten which one's which now I never can remember wait a minute this this is the reading eye and that's the distance eye so I can't always see terribly well if you see what I mean when I'm doing this because this is my distance eye Ooh. right let me just tidy that up a bit see this has gone a bit haywire up here okay there we are and I'm just going to very gently smudge them with my little fingers just to make them a little bit more smoky Although, to be honest, they've set pretty quickly already, but just to make them less... I mean, interestingly, this does look black, doesn't it? But it's actually called Turkish coffee. I'm thinking about trying that. They've got a sort of purpley one, which I think would be quite nice. So the next product we're going to use is a bronzer, and I'm going to use this little mini hourglass ambient lighting bronzer, this one here. It's actually in a sort of... A light, it's quite a light shade really for my skin but I really like it and of course it's got the wonderful sort of luminous ambient lighting shtick as it were that um, Hourglass specialise in. Now I must get myself, talking of brushes, I must get myself a new bronzing brush because this one is a little bit too fat. Now I'm going to get some on my brush like this and I'm going to put it on my cheekbones now, I've recently done a video, well, actually, I've done two videos, one on bronzers and one on makeup mistakes, which I will link down below for you and up in the corner. And um, yes, it was interesting because I was trying to work out and trying to sort of help uh, viewers to understand where to put bronzer. I'm not sure I did. I may have confused everybody because I'm still not 100% sure, but I think I'm kind of liking what I'm doing at the moment. So what I've done is I've put it on my, I'm going to shear this out in a minute, I'm going to blend it. What I'm also doing now is I'm putting some under my brow bone just here. Oh, sorry, on my brow bone, I should say. Like that, as if it's a kind of a transition shade. Now, I was watching another YouTuber the other day, a makeup artist called Andrea Ali, and she was saying with a transition shade, if you want a sort of natural look, try and choose a colour, I mean, I suppose it makes sense really, that's not dissimilar to your own skin tone. So I would say, although this has got a sheen to it, it's not that dissimilar, is it, to my skin, which is a kind of a medium neutral shade. Anyway, let us now shear out, blend out a bit the bronzer, not the one, not the, uh, not the bit under my brows, but just this one here. That is a great colour actually, isn't it? I really like that because it's not too, well, it's not orange, which a lot of bronzers I think can be. But it just gives a nice kind of look to the skin, nice kind of glow. 
Right, we've got bronze on, now let's go for mascara and I'm in love. Actually, I seem to be in love with all these products, which I suppose is why I choose them on a daily basis. The Hourglass Mascara Caution, it's called, because a few weeks ago, I think when I was buying this, actually, I managed to get some minis. I think they had a sale on or something. Um, I bought a mini caution mascara, which I think I tried before, but I hadn't been that impressed with. Anyway, I absolutely love this now, so I decided to go the full Monty and buy the large size, which I have done, and I am loving it at the moment. I really am. My lashes have definitely never been as long as this. So I do credit the serum for that, I really do. I think the serum has been amazing. That's the UK Lash one. But to be honest, I'm not sure that there's much between the sort of higher priced and the and the, um, the lower priced serums. Now, sometimes my lashes don't play ball, so to speak. So I often have a gap, like this one here is not quite being, behaving itself, but never mind. So the final product I'm going to use is lipstick and I'm going to use the wonderful Lisa Eldridge Velvet Muse. This one here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it with my little finger. Sorry, my lips are a bit dry at the moment, but I find it difficult to find a nice lip balm that doesn't have a scent in it, doesn't have fragrance. I kind of like to go slightly over the edge of my top lip, just to make it look a bit softer. Okay, so here's the finished look. What do we think? I mean, what's really interesting is I haven't used any blusher, and normally I would use blusher in fact, I would use blusher over bronzer any day, but I really quite like this. I think it looks understated, but it looks like I've made an effort and I look put together and I think it really does suit me. Let me know in the comments below, what do you think? Does it work? Have you ever tried using just bronzer and not a blusher? It really is a bit of a game changer for me, I think. It's definitely something I'm going to experiment more with. I've literally only just started doing it this week. So there you have it. That is my simple, everyday makeup look for mature skins. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, please consider giving it a thumbs up and better yet, subscribing to the channel. And do leave me some comments below. I'd be really interested to see what you think. Have you tried makeup without blusher? It is a bit of a shocker, isn't it? But actually, I'm rather liking it. And this is a look that I've created just this week, but I have been using it every day and I'm really enjoying doing so. I hope you're all doing really well and thank you again so much for watching. It does mean the world to me and I'll look forward to seeing you on my next video. Bye.